Well, good morning to Lighthouse Church live stream, Lighthouse Community Church live stream. I'm going to start. I will welcome you first and say, Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. If you're new with us today, welcome. Welcome to joining us. And uh, this is church from my home. Psalm 100 says this. Shout with joy to the Lord, O earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him, singing with joy. Acknowledge the Lord is God, and he has made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. See, we are going to sing a few songs, um, because we are told in Psalm 100, Come before him, singing with joy. And even though we're in difficult times, I believe we can come singing with joy. Give me two minutes because obviously we need to switch the systems over. But uh, bear with us and we're going to start with some praise. In 
Christ alone to confess fullness of God in helpless day, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on the cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin. On him was laid, here in the death of Christ I lay. There in the blood, his body lay, light of the world by darkness lay. In glorious day, upon the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since grace has lost its grip on me, for I am his, and he is mine, born with the precious blood of Well, I hope you praised, I hope we gave God the praise there uh, that he deserves, that he deserves, even in these difficult times. Well, um, can I just apologize for last week? Apparently I was moving around a bit too quick. Uh, it made people have motion sickness. So I'm going to try today, I'm going to try today to keep, to keep uh, um, still or as anybody knows me as a pastor, I like to express, I like to express my passion, my passion for Jesus, my passion for Jesus. But before we go into the word, I, I just like to pray. We've got some prayer requests for some people and um, we're going to pray. Kathy's going to lead us in prayer. Uh, she doesn't want to come on, but she's going to lead us in prayer. So um, I'm not going to go whatever, um, but can you lead us in prayer, Kathy? Amen. Well, Father God, we do thank you that we can come before you, Lord, that, Lord, you know the cries of our heart, Lord Jesus, and, Lord, we bring before you all those who are in need of a healing touch this morning, Lord. Lord, you know the one on my heart, Lord Jesus. I pray, Father God, that anxiety would be gone in the name of Jesus, yes. that, Lord, you would that you know that you would restore the heartbeat lord to yes. um, to normal beats father god yes, lord it can be so frightening lord when your heart is racing mm. you have no control but father god we pray for healing for this lady in the mighty name of jesus Amen. we say lord have your way lord Indeed. jesus bring healing and restore her mm. and father god i also pray as well lord for a lady that's going into hospital lord to have a baby yes, oh father do. god i pray lord against all this anxiety and this fear the unknown lord jesus because it isn't a, a, um, 
because it isn't as it was before, Lord Jesus, that, you know, that we, because staff have to take um, extra precautions, Father God, and yeah. it can cause fear and, and anxious thoughts, Father yeah, God. So Lord, we pray, Lord, Lord that this lady away. would be Jesus calm name. in this situation, yes. Lord. We pray, Lord, Praise for a safe, a safe, um, a, a safe delivery of the baby, Father God. We, and we thank you for the children, Lord. They are a gift from you, Father yes, God. Lord. And we thank you and praise you. And Lord, we also continue to pray, Lord, for your world, Lord, for this yes, pandemic indeed. that is sweeping the nation, Father God. Oh Lord, I pray, bring healing upon your land. Yes. Lord, bring bring healing upon each and every one. Father God, I pray that you'll be with all the, the staff and the nurses and doctors. Father God, mm. I pray protection upon them and their families. Yes, oh indeed. Father God, I say, have your way in, in your this way. situation, Lord, Father God. We bring it before you now, Lord, and we thank, thank you, you that Lord. we can just praise you and bless you lord we jesus do. that we can receive healing from you lord yes, that father god we can cry out to you lord because we know father, that all your promises are yes and amen you. and lord we give you the thank glory you, this morning for all that you're doing lord and all that mm. you've done but for lord lord all that you're going to do now father god and as we come to hear your word this morning i pray lord that you would still our hearts and our minds that we would be open to receive all that you want us to receive in your name jesus we thank you and bless you. Amen. Amen indeed. Amen indeed. Well, um, what a week we've had again. Um, a week we are further in lockdown. But uh, I just want to just silence that TV behind me because it's showing there. Uh, Kathy, can you do that for me? Thank you. There you go. There's tough times, isn't it? You know, we're in tough times. Uh, no doubt about it. You know, I've never... Uh, myself in my lifetime um, been in a situation like this in total lockdown the country in total lockdown um, you know and it's difficult to look behind on doesn't it what's currently happening it is very difficult in our lives see and it's difficult to see the light at the end of the tunnel. But there is light. I like to say that today. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Whether you're going through a big life change, the hard time for your family, or personal health concerns, or are anxious with the threat of this virus, which is sweeping the world. Not just sweeping this country, but the world. This is a pandemic, you know. Whether we're worried about that, we can have an optimistic frame of mind. And we can, you know, Jesus can help us see a, through a difficult challenge. And it gives us an opportunity for gratitude. For gratitude. You may say, what, what is he on about? Gratitude. Well, in Romans, Romans, which is a book in the Bible, which was written by Paul, Paul says that we can rejoice in our sufferings because we are a people of hope. Yes, I know we spoke about hope last week, but I want to speak about hope again this week because I feel that we are a nation in need of hope at the moment. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings. Wow, did he say that? Knowing that the sufferings produce endurance. And endurance produces character. And character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts. That's right, God's love has been poured into our hearts. Through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Wow. Great words of Paul right into the Romans here. And right into us, the church indeed, for a time perhaps such as this. So how can we hope when everything looks hopeless? That is my question. How can we hope when everything seems hopeless? In the midst of suffering, we can rejoice because the challenge, the challenge help causes us to rely on God's presence. Rejoicing in suffering does not mean celebrating when bad news comes. No, no. Of course we are going, can't just say, great, bad news is here. No, I'm not saying that. But it does mean 
but we can believe that God is doing a redemptive work. What is his work redemptive? This word redemptive means that God does not waste hurt or disappointment. He is using them to shape and build us in the image of Jesus, which is his highest passion. You know, we see that, he says that in Psalm 23, 4. You know, David writes that he does not fear because God is with him. David, a character in the Old Testament times, says this. He does not fear because God is with him. He relies on God, on the presence of God, and it brings in strength and comfort. Remember that there is to be a, there is to be a shadow, but where there's a shadow, there has to be a light. And that's that light that is walking with you in that valley at this moment in time. The light of Jesus is walking with us at this time. I want to say that to you. I want to say that there is hope in this time because the light of Jesus. There is hope, there is genuine hope that can bring back joy back to you. You may not feel it at this moment in time. We may be going through difficult times and some people through devastating losses. But Jesus says, there is genuine hope that can bring joy back to us. Like rain on a drought-riven desert, hope refreshes your life and brings you and me to lasting peace. But, so where does this hope come from? Where does this hope come from? I don't see much of it in this time, you may say. If you have your Bibles near to you, don't worry if you haven't, because I will be reading it. But it's always good to follow with your Bible. Always good to follow with your Bible. Two Thessalonians, chapter 1, verses 3 to 4. And I'll wait a moment and pause just so you can catch up with me. In verses three to four, we read this. We ought always to thank God for you, brothers, and rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more. And the love every one of you has for each other is increasing. Therefore, among God's churches, we boast about your perseverance and faith in all persecutions and trials that you are enduring. And we are enduring in trials at this moment. See, love indeed brings hope. Last week we looked at the Easter story and the resurrection, which brings hope. Of course it does. It's a form of love. The resurrection was from the love of Jesus dying on the cross. He died, for, he was out of a love for us. And he rose again, which shows there is hope. As Paul writes this, he points out some interesting things that are taking place here. He reminds them that the faith is growing, the Thessalonians, that is. Their love is increasing. They are standing tough. And they are facing it together. It was tough times, but they were facing it together. If someone were to ask me if I wanted to be described as a person who was going stronger in my faith and loving others more, I'd have to say, do you know what? Certainly, I want to be described as that person. It is happening in this passage, look. But it's not happening in the good times. It is happening in the pressure cooker times. You know, a pressure cooker where it boils and it causes pressure. And it's that pressure that cooks. 
Paul says this in the Bible. He says this in 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And he goes on to say, and the greatest of these is love. Wow. See, I want to say today that the Bible makes it clear that God's love means that God internally gives himself to others. That is love when we give ourselves to others. Love is part of our DNA. Understanding of love as self-giving to others. In these days, we are seeing this. We are seeing people giving to others out of love for others. You know, we mostly see this to come together when there's war. And there's no difference today. You know, the medical profession are calling this a war. A war against an unseen virus. That is what they're saying that we are in. A war. A war zone, they say, in, among people. We are at a time of war. As this pandemic, we are seeing erotic acts of love. Of love. People giving, self-giving to others at this moment in time. Wow. We are told that God's love. And that is so true. See, God is love. I want to say that to you today. God is love. God was active before creation among the members of the Trinity. Wow, before all of us, he was love. Because it says in John, another book in the Bible, says Jesus speaks to his Father, my glory which you have given me in your love for me before the foundation of the world. Isn't that mind-blowing? Isn't that amazing? I find that totally mind-blowing. It, 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 it's hard to comprehend, isn't it? That Jesus was loved before creation. That God was loved before creation. Wow. See, I want to tell you this. The eternal love between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit makes heaven a world of love and joy because each person of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit seeks to bring joy and happiness to the other two. Truly, we worship a God of love. We worship a God of love. We can smile about that. We can praise him about that. We've been praising this morning because God is love. God shows love to us even though we we're sinners, or perhaps we have not given our lives to Christ at this moment, but he still loves us. He loves us that much, but he says this in John 3, 16. Yes, I use this verse a lot, and it's a well-known verse, and you probably are reciting it at this moment, but if you're not, that's fine. That's fine. I just want to share it with you. John 3.16 says this, and I can almost hear you saying it now as I'm reading it. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. What hope. What a promise. And it is that love as believers, that we are to imitate this communicable attribute of God. We communicate this love as a church. We pray as a church. We are praying uh, for the community. We are praying without ceasing for you guys, for the church, but also for the community we live in, but also for the world. We are praying without ceasing. We are doing that because we love we love Jesus and we love our community and we love our church and we love each other. Someone said this, 
Based on this, we know that love is a result that we see of our faith. And our hope, love is a goal. How wonderful is it to understand the goal? When you start a new game, the biggest hurdle is often obtaining and understanding more than physical limitations. If you understand the goal, you can use what you have to get there. Wow. You know, sometimes we make great discoveries about God when we weren't expecting to do so. When we're under pressure, in that pressure cooker situation, we are able to see the way God provides and care for us and brings us hope. It enables us to see what God is doing for us. God does some of his greatest work in the pressure cooker. Never forget, it takes broken soil to produce a crop. It takes broken clouds to give rain. It takes broken grain to give bread. It takes broken bread to give us strength. In the midst of turbulent times, I want to say this, we find power that we never knew we could have. I've seen demonstrations of that on the TV this week. Power out of these situations. Erotic uh, situations. The front line are in. The erotic situations of a 99-year-old walking miles in his back garden to raise money. Wow. Wow. It's that power that brings its hope. This is good news for all who have a relationship with God, with Jesus. We find these words on the day in the Bible, on the day he comes to be glorified in his holy people and to be marveled at among those who have believed. And I'm going to give you an option at the end of this uh, presentation or this word for the day, but you too, if you want to uh, commit your life and receive the gift that God's got for you, I'm going to give you that opportunity. This includes you because you believe our testimony to you. I realise that you're in, that there's hope to be discovered in the middle of pressure might not be exciting to some. Many would say, I don't want to find out. I just want that pressure to end. This is what makes this point exciting. At some point, the pressure really does end. The great thing about being a believer and the attractive things about Christianity for the non-believer is that there's a promise of a day when the pressure ends. On that day, it's gone forever. We will never be faced with pressure again because Jesus has risen, there is hope. That is the best news we could ever get. That hope allows us to face life every day, knowing that God is in control. That hope allows us the freedom to become all that God has us called to be. That hope restores meaning and purpose from the rubble of our shattered lives. We do not have to face problems, pain or pressure alone. The one who created us and loves us will be with us through all situations. Often in our lives, we find ourselves in situations where we do not know what to do. I don't have all the answers. The circumstances of life are swirled out of control and the pressure is overwhelming. But the promise is God is that, is that in that moment, he does what needs to be done. He will not leave us alone. He will not forget we need him. The Father stands with us and we never face the music alone. That security brings us hope. That hope is a precious gift given to us because Jesus lives. There's a book in the Bible called Titus. Look it up if you wish. Three, four to seven. And it says this. But when the kindness of God, our Saviour and his love towards men appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we did ourselves, but according to his mercy, he saved us 
through the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, which he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Saviour, that being justified by grace, we might be made his according to the hope of eternal life. Of eternal life. As I said earlier, if you are listening today and you don't know Jesus, or you've not received that gift of Jesus, but this has stirred you. This has stirred you to believe in there is hope. You want to have hope. I believe Jesus is saying to you today to accept my gift. My gift I have for you. That gift I want to give you of love and hope in the year and now and in the future. If that's you, we just, just pray with me now a short prayer. It's a very short prayer. Dear God, I am a sinner. I'm sorry for my sin. Please forgive me. I believe Jesus Christ is that your son and that he died for my sins and that you raised him to life. I want to invite, invite him into my heart to take control of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. That's the best thing you could do for yourself today. To let Jesus in. Talk to Jesus about the situation. There is hope. For Jesus loves us. Jesus loves you. He gives us the hope. I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope you've... Uh, Enjoyed being with us this morning. It is shorter than our normal services, but uh, it's a flavour of, of and, and it's a time we can come together and celebrate the Lord, and celebrate the Lord, and rejoice with the Lord, and listen to some encouragement in these dark days. It is encouragement. Jesus is love. We have hope in Jesus. Until next week, I'm going to say. God bless, God be with you, in Jesus' name, amen.